Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Today, inshallah, we're going to solve Cambridge exam, October, November 2023, paper 23. Let's start it. Question 1. A sample of a gas occupies 340 centimeter cube at room temperature and pressure. The temperature and the pressure are both increased, but the volume remains 340 centimeter cube. Which row describe what happened to the particle speed and the average distance between the particle in the uh, gas when the temperature and pressure are both increased. Of course, increasing the temperature will increase the kinetic energy of the particles so they will move faster. That's why the particle speed will increase. For the distance between the particles, as the volume remains the same, 340 centimeter cubed, so the distance will not change and the answer will be C. Question two, which statement about the rate of diffusion of the gases Ammonia, carbon monoxide, nitrogen, and oxygen are correct. Hence, the question is about diffusion. So I calculated the molecular mass for all the four gases. Ammonia, 17, carbon monoxide, 28, nitrogen, 28, and oxygen, 32. Nitrogen and carbon monoxide will diffuse at the same rate. This is correct because they have the same molecular mass, so they will diffuse by the same rate. Oxygen will diffuse the slowest because it's an element. This is, of course, wrong. Oxygen is the slowest because it has the highest molecular mass. Ammonia will diffuse the fastest. This is correct because ammonia has the lowest molecular mass. So 1 and 3 are correct and the answer is B. Question 3. The structure of an atom of an element X is shown. As we can see, X has 5 protons, 5 electrons and 6 neutrons. So we will go to the periodic table, check the element which has five protons it is boron and the answer is a question four which statement explain why isotopes of an element have the same chemical reaction isotopes have the same chemical reaction or chemical properties because they have the same number of electrons in the outer shell so the answer is c question five magnesium reacts with oxygen to form magnesium oxide what happened to the magnesium atoms and oxygen atom during this reaction? Of course, between the oxygen and magnesium, we have ionic bond where magnesium loses two electrons to form magnesium ion with a plus two charge and oxygen gains two electrons to form oxide ion with a minus two charge. So first the statement, magnesium and oxygen share two electrons. This is of course wrong. It's ionic bond and not covalent, so there is no sharing. Magnesium gains two electrons. This is, of course, wrong. Magnesium loses two electrons. Magnesium loses one electron. This is, of course, wrong. Magnesium is in group two, so it will lose two electrons. The only correct statement is D. Magnesium loses two electrons and oxygen gains two electrons. Question six. Which row about the properties of both diamond and silicon four oxide is correct? He's asking about if they are conductor of electricity and what is the type of the molecule of course both diamond and silicon four oxide are non-conductor so we will choose no they don't conduct electricity and the type of molecule both are giant covalent so the answer is c question seven the equation represents the reaction between solid magnesium oxide and dilute hydrochloric acid to form magnesium chloride and water of course, dilute hydrochloric acid is an aqueous solution. Magnesium chloride uh, is a soluble salt, so it is also aqueous. And water is a liquid. Which row describe the state symbol for hydrochloric acid, magnesium chloride, and water? As we can see, hydrochloric acid aqueous, magnesium chloride aqueous, and water is a liquid. So the answer is A. Question 8. Which substance is a mixture? Of course, air is a mixture of gases. Graphite is an element, oxygen is an element, and water is a compound. So the answer is A. Question 9. The number of moles of atoms X, Y, and Z in a compound are shown. Here we have X, Y, and Z, and here we have the number of moles. What is the formula of the compound? To know the formula of the compound, we will make a ratio between the number of moles of the three substances present in this compound. So the ratio is 0 0.6 to 1.2 to 
0 0.3 then we will divide by the smallest number which is 0 0.3 so the ratio will be 2 to 4 to 1 that means the empirical formula is x2 y4 z so the answer is d question 10 one mole of silver nitrate contains 1.2 times 10 to the power 24 ions how many ions are there in 0 0.25 moles of iron oxide first i have to know that one mole of iron oxide contain the avogadro's constant of iron oxide formula from the total formula which is iron fe2o3 iron oxide so we have avogadro's constant from this formula hence each formula contain five ions we have two ions for iron and three for oxygen so we have five ions so to know the number of ions in one mole we will multiply avogadro's constant by five and hence we have only 0 0.25 mole which is quarter of a mole so again we will multiply by quarter to get the total number of ions in quarter moles and if you do this multiplication you will find the answer is 7.5 times 10 to the power of 23 and the answer is c question 11 concentrated aqueous magnesium bromide is electrolyzed using carbon electrode which equation represents the reaction occurring at each electrode we have concentrated potassium aqueous potassium bromide so the ions present magnesium ions bromide ions and hydrogen positive ions and oh negative ions from water hence the magnesium is highly reactive metal so the hydrogen gas will be discharged at the cathode and since we have a concentrated aqueous magnesium bromide solution the bromide ion present in enough concentration so bromine will be discharged at the anode so here at the positive electrode the anode we will have bromine when each bromide ion loses one electron so we will have two bromide ions loses two electron to form aqueous bromine and the, at the negative electrode we will have hydrogen gas so the answer is a question 12 aqueous copper sulfate is electrolyzed using carbon electrodes again we have aqueous copper sulfate copper ions sulfate ions and h and oh from water hence copper is less reactive than hydrogen so copper ions will be discharged at the cathode and we will have the hydroxide ions attracted to the anode where oxygen gas discharged so the uh, the products at the cathode and the anode will be copper metal at the cathode and oxygen gas at the anode the blue color of the solution will will fade of course as the copper ion responsible for the blue color when the copper ion change into copper metal the color of the solution will fade so the answer is d question 13 when water is added to iron 3 chloride iron 3 chloride hydrated is formed and the energy is given out here as we can see this is the anhydrous iron chloride by adding water it will convert to the hydrated iron chloride energy is given out that means addition of water is an exothermic reaction and this is for the forward reaction which reaction pathway diagram represent the formation of the anhydrous 3 chloride in the reverse reaction so here the question is asking about the reverse reaction formation of the anhydrous 3 chloride so the reactant will be the hydrated iron chloride and of course he is asking about the reverse reaction and the reverse will be endothermic an endothermic reaction the reactant at lower energy level than the product and energy is taken in so here the reactant will be iron 3 hydrated crystal it will be fec3 uh, with six molecules of water and the product will be the anhydrous iron chloride of course because it's an endothermic react reaction so the reactant will be at lower energy level than the product and the answer will be b question 14 ethene reacts with hydrogen and the equation is as shown the bond energy are shown which what is the energy change for this reaction 
First, we will calculate the energy absorbed to break the bonds. We have one carbon-carbon double bond and four carbon-hydrogen bond. So the carbon-carbon double bond, 610. Four carbon-hydrogen bonds, four multiplied by 410. And we have one hydrogen-hydrogen bond, which is 436. Uh, sorry, uh, 36, yes. So it is the total energy absorbed is 2,686. And then the energy released when forming new bonds in the products. Here we have E same. So one single bond between carbon and carbon. It's 350. And six carbon hydrogen bonds. So we will multiply 410 by six. The total energy released is 2810. And the delta H will be the energy absorbed minus the energy released. It will be minus 124 kilojoule per mole. And the answer is B. Question 15, statement about four different acids are listed. We have concentration 0 0.01 mole per decimeter cube for hydrochloric acid, which has a BH2, 0 0.01 mole per decimeter cube ethanoic acid, which has a BH3.4, hydrobromic acid is a strong acid, ethanoic acid is slightly stronger acid than trimethyl ethanoic acid. What are the BH value of 0.01 mole decimeter cube hydrobromic acid and 0.01 mole per decimeter cube trimethyl ethanoic acid? Well, it is mentioned here that uh, hydrobromic acid is a strong acid. So the BH of the strong acid will be like hydrochloric acid. It will be BH2. That's why the BH of the hydrobromic acid will be 2. And again here, ethanoic acid is slightly stronger than the uh, trimethyl ethanoic acid so ethanoic acid has a bh 3.4 and it is slightly stronger than the trimethyl ethanoic acid that means this acid trimethanoic acid will have a slightly higher bh than 3.4 because it's weaker than the ethanoic acid so we will choose 3.5 and the answer is b question 16 anhydrous cobalt chloride is blue and it turns pink when water is added of course, this reaction can be reversed by heating, so we can remove the water, and again, the cobalt chloride will change back to the anhydrous form, and the answer is C. Question 17. The reaction between hydrogen and nitrogen is reversible. The forward reaction is exothermic. Reaction between nitrogen and hydrogen to form ammonia. This is a Hipper process which change to the condition would increase the yield of ammonia. Of course, adding a catalyst will have no effect on the yield. Increasing the pressure will shift the equilibrium to the side with the lowest number of moles, which is the size of the product, because here we have four moles and here only two moles. So increasing the pressure will shift the position of the equilibrium toward forward toward formation of ammonia. So the yield of ammonia will increase. Increasing the temperature, because the forward reaction is exothermic, that means the equilibrium will be shifted backward, so the yield of ammonia will decrease. Reduce the concentration of nitrogen. If we reduce the concentration of nitrogen, that means the equilibrium again will be shifted backward to form more nitrogen, so this is wrong. The only correct statement is B. Question 18. Ethanol can be turned into ethanoic acid by passing it over a hot copper oxide. What type of this reaction? Of course, as we can see, ethanol is oxidized to ethanoic acid and the copper oxide loses oxygen and it, uh, it is reduced to form copper. So here we have oxidation and reduction in the same reaction. The, the, of course, the type of chemical reaction will be redox and the answer is B. Question 19. When heated strongly, Silicon 4 oxide react with carbon. Which term describe what happened to silicon 4 oxide? Here, silicon 4 oxide loses oxygen and converts into silicon, so silicon 4 oxide is reduced, and the term that describe what happened is reduction. The answer is D. Question 20. Which statement about aqueous weak acid is correct? Weak acids are always diluted aqueous solutions. This is, of course, wrong. Concentrated acids also can be diluted. Weak acids dissociate fully in aqueous solutions. This is, of course, 
wrong they are only partially dissociated when a weak acid is added to blue litmus paper it stays blue this is of course wrong it makes the blue litmus paper red when a weak acid is added to solid magnesium effervescence is seen this is correct of course dilute uh, a weak acid can react with magnesium to form hydrogen gas and that's why effervescence is seen so the answer is d question 21 which oxide are basic basic oxides are metal oxide so here we have carbon calcium oxide calcium is metal so calcium oxide is basic sodium oxide of course it's a metal so it's also a basic oxide iron 2 oxide also a basic so all the three are correct and the answer is a question 22 zinc oxide is an amphoteric oxide zinc oxide is added to excess dilute hydrochloric acid and excess aqueous sodium hydroxide which row describe the observation made in this reaction of course uh, amphoteric oxide can react with both diluted acids and alkalis so it will give reaction in the same in both cases and the zinc oxide will react and dissolve with hydrochloric acid and with sodium hydroxide would dissolve to form a colorless solution here and here so the answer is a question 23 which row shows the properties of an element that is in the same group of the periodic table as lithium lithium is in group one so he's asking about electrical conductivity of course group one are metals so they are a good conductor of electricity we'll choose high electrical conductivity and for the density of course group one has low density so we'll choose 0 0.97 for the density of an element in group one the answer is a question 24 the elements in group 7 include chlorine bromine and iodine which statement are correct here the question is asking about the trend of group 7 elements so first here we have the all the group 7 elements as we can see the trend reactivity decrease as we go down the group density increase as we go down and the melting point also increase as we go down so the first one iodine is more dense than chlorine as we've just said the density increase as we go down so of course iodine is more dense than chlorine this is correct iodine displaces chlorine as the reactivity decreases as we go down iodine is less reactive so it cannot displace chlorine bromine is diatomic non-metal all group seven are non-metal and they are diatomic so statement three is correct chlorine gas is darker in color than bromine vapor as we go down group seven the color gets darker so of course bromine is darker than chlorine statement four is not correct we only have two correct statement one and three and the answer is b question 25 cobalt is a transition metal what is the property of cobalt it can form a color compound of course this is the property of transition metal it's a poor conductor this is of course wrong low density wrong and low melting point this is also wrong because transition metal have high melting point high density and they are good conductor of electricity so only a is correct question 26 which metal has a variable oxidation number transition metal have variable oxidation number here we have copper which is transition metal so the answer is c question 27 which statement about alloy is correct alloy are pure metal elements this is wrong alloy are mixtures at least two or more metals reacted together to make alloys this is wrong because we have an alloy like steel it, it is formed between metal which is iron and a non-metal which is carbon so we don't have to make an alloy from two metals uh, statement c alloy can be harder and stronger than the pure metal and this is correct steel is not an alloy because it can contain a non-metal which is carbon i've just mentioned that steel is an alloy of metal uh, iron and carbon so statement c is not correct the only uh, correct answer is c question 28 a metal m is between sodium and magnesium in the reactivity series so here i put the metal m in between sodium and magnesium in the reactivity series of course sodium is higher in the reactivity series than magnesium which reaction occur with metal m and 
its oxide. M react with the steam. Of course, it will react as magnesium below M and it reacts with the steam. So, of course, M will also react with the steam. And M can be extracted by heating its oxide with carbon. This is, of course, wrong because M will be higher in the reactivity series than carbon. Carbon is below magnesium. So, the elements above carbon in the reactivity series are more reactive than carbon and their oxide cannot be reduced by carbon. So, the answer is C. Question 29. The diagram shows experiments to investigate rusting of iron nail. In which test tube do the nails rust? In the first test, test tube, we have tap water and the test tube is open, so oxygen is present and water is present. The iron, of course, will rust. Here we have salty water and, of course, we have oxygen because the test tube is open and the salt increases the rate of rusting. So, of course, and also in test tube 2, the iron will rust. In test tube 3, we have boiled water and boiled water, it is boiled to remove air. So it doesn't contain air and we have a layer of oil which prevent air from entering to the water. So there is no oxygen in tube 3, only tube 1 and 2 will rust and the answer is B. Question 30. Which equation represents the reaction that takes place when iron is extracted from its ore in the blast furnace? Here we have uh, the calcium oxide react with the impurities silicon oxide to form calcium silicate. This equation happened in the blast furnace to remove the impurities, which is silicon dioxide. As we can see, calcium oxide with carbon dioxide. This is correct. Uh, this is sorry incorrect equation. A carbon monoxide break into carbon and carbon dioxide. This is incorrect. Iron react with carbon dioxide. This is wrong. Iron react with carbon monoxide. So the only correct statement is A. Question 31. Some uses of water are listed. It is used for drinking, chemical reaction, swimming pools, and in washing. For which uses it is necessary to chlorinate water? Of course, the water of drinking, chlorinated to kill bacteria, and also water in the swimming pools because uh, chlorine is a disinfectant for water, so it will be used for drinking and swimming, swimming pools. And we have two correct statements, one and three, and the answer is B. Question 32. Oxides of nitrogen are formed in the car engine and are source of air pollution. To decrease this pollution, catalytic converters are fitted to the car exhausts. What happened to the oxide of nitrogen in the catalytic converter? Oxide of nitrogen change into nitrogen gas in the catalytic converter. As we can see, oxide of nitrogen lose oxygen to convert into nitrogen gas. So, of course, it is reduction. Question 33. Which pair of compounds are structural isomers for each other? The first one here, they don't have the same molecular formula. In this compound, it has more CH2, so they are not isomers because isomers have the same molecular formula but different structure. In the second one, the rule of naming of an organic compound is to give the function group the lowest number possible. So for this compound, we will give this carbon, carbon number one, we start counting from the left side. And in the second compound, we will start counting from the right side, so this will be carbon number one. In both cases, we will have prop one in. So they are the same compound, they are not isomers. And for compounds at C, also we have the same rule. This is carbon number one, and here also we, this is carbon number one. So this is propane one all. They are not isomers, they are the same compound. Finally, here in D, we have an acid, an ester, so we will count how many carbon, oxygen, and hydrogen to compare the molecular formula because they have different structure. And if we count the number of carbon here, we have one, two, three, four carbon. So it is C4 and three plus two, five plus two, seven plus one, eight hydrogen and two oxygen. Again, we will check the molecular formula for the ester. One, two, three, four carbons. So we have C4 and hydrogen 3 plus 3 is 6 plus 2 is 8 and 2 oxygen. And now they have the same 
molecular formula but they have different structure this is butanoic acid and this is an ester of ethyl ethanoate both have the same molecular formula but different structure so the answer is d question 34 methane react with chlorine in sunlight which statement about this reaction are correct it's a substitution reaction yes alkane can make substitution reaction only it's an addition so it's wrong a photochemical reaction yes because it needs sunlight to happen so it's a photochemical reaction it is catalyzed by nickel this is wrong the catalyst is the uv light from the sun so the answer is a question 35 bromine react with bromine to give only one product what is the formula of this product to check the formula of the product we have to make it first to draw the displayed formula so we can choose which one here we will break the double bond and add bromine on these two carbons which we're having the double bond so here i have bromine on carbon number one and bromine on carbon number two the formula will be ch3 ch br then ch2 br and that's why the answer is c question 36 ethanol can be manufactured by fermentation or by catalytic addition of steam to ethene which statement describes the advantage an advantage of manufacturing ethanol by fermentation the yield is low this of course is not an advantage the method used is a batch process this is a disadvantage also it is not an advantage the process takes place at lower temperatures this is the advantage because lower temperature we will have low cost ethanol is made from a renewable resource and this is advantage because we are using glucose from sugarcane or from fruits and this is a renewable resource so both three and four are correct and the answer is d question 37 a compound with the formula ch3 coo c2 h5 is formed when uh, from ethanol in two separate reactions first ethanol react to form ethanoic acid then ethanoic acid and ethanol react together to form this compound which row describe reaction one and reaction two First, when ethanol react to form ethanoic acid, ethanol is oxidized to form ethanoic acid using acidified potassium manganate or acidified potassium dichromate. So the first reaction is oxidation. And second reaction, ethanoic acid react with ethanol, reaction between carboxylic acid and alcohol to form ester. So it is ester formation or esterification. The answer is A. Question 38. The flow diagram shows how polyethene made from petroleum. First, petroleum is converted into fuel oil, then the fuel oil converted into ethene, and ethene form polyethene polymers. What are the stages 1, 2, and? Of course, petroleum can be separated into fraction, like fuel oil, by fractional distillation. So the first process process one is a fractional distillation to bring to uh, separate petroleum into fraction then the fuel oil with a longer chain is breaking by a process called cracking to form shorter chain alkane and alkene like ethene so the second process is cracking finally ethene is polymerized to form polyethene so the third process is polymerization and the answer is c Question 39. The RF value are used to identify unknown substance using paper chromatography. Which statement about the RF value are correct? The RF value is always less than 1. This is correct because RF value is the distance moved by the sample divide the distance moved by the solvent. And hence, the distance moved by the sample is always smaller or sh shorter than the distance moved by the solvent. So, it is always less than 1. The RF value is the distance traveled by the solvent divide the distance traveled by the unknown substance. This is wrong. And the higher the RF value, the further the unknown substance travel. This is correct. As the, the, the unknown substance move a longer distance, the RF value will be higher. The RF value are not affected by the solubility. This is, of course, wrong. So we have only 1 and 3 are correct. And the answer is B. Question 40. The results from some test on an aqueous solution of substance X are listed. First, a creamy precipitate is produced when adding aqueous silver nitrate. 
silver nitrate is the reagent used to test for halide ion hence we have a creamy precipitate so the ion present is bromide ions and the uh, precipitate is silver bromide adding aqueous sodium hydroxide produces a green precipitate which dissolves in excess alkali the green precipitate formed is chromium hydroxide hence chromium is amphotic so it will dissolve in the excess alkali and the ion present here is chromium ion the green precipitate is chromium hydroxide adding aqueous ammonia produces a green precipitate which is insoluble in the excess ammonia again the green precipitate is chromium hydroxide so the ions were naturally present in the aqueous solution chromium ions and bromide ions and the substance is chromium 3 bromide here we come to the end of our exam like the video and subscribe to the channel to receive all the updates comment down below if you have any question thank you for watching wish you all best of luck